Welcome back to My Mom's Basement with Robbie Fox. I am here with Brian Danielson, ahead of Fight for the Fallen. It'll be his in-ring return versus Daniel Garcia. Brian, thanks for being here, especially on show day, ahead of your big return. How are you? How are you feeling? Doing great. I, uh, I just ran three miles and, uh, and doing great. <laughs> just ran three miles. Is that normal for you on show day? Uh, yeah, kind of. A lot of times... Um, I would get to the building early with William Regal and uh, and work with some people, uh, train with some people and that sort of thing. So if I'm, we're getting there, like sometimes we get there as early as 10 uh, or 11. But uh, if that's the case, I probably am not getting in my run. But uh, but yeah, I'm uh, I, I'm training for something. So so yeah, but it, today was a today was a light day, uh, uh, an easy an easy three miler. Yeah, that doesn't exist for me. An easy three miler. I envy that. <laughs> Um, I actually heard about you and William Regal going to the arena early on show day and working with young talent and stuff. And I wanted to ask you about that because the last time we spoke was, I believe, April of 2021. And we kind of talked about how you didn't love the seminar process or, or the coaching process. So how are you liking that experience? So I like it a lot. So I like, I really like working with individuals, right? I think that's where like, it's hard with big groups. And I think that's um, because you're not, if you work with individuals, you're working on what they need to work on versus, okay, everybody, let's learn how to do a hip toss, right? You know what I mean? And like everybody has different things that they need to work on. And so like class settings are good if you don't have any other options, but um, working with people and kind of, I, I prefer a mix of like three people working with three people at a time, because then like you get different body types, but you're all kind of working on, you can really get deep into stuff. Do you have any favorites to work with or people that you've seen a lot of improvement from? Yeah, but uh, a, a lot of people, or, or I don't want to say a lot of people, a couple people, but I don't want to point some people out because then it, makes other people feel bad <laughs> that's fair enough that you know what that's the dad in you you have multiple yeah, kids yeah. you're like i can't pick between my children here yeah right and the last time we spoke was actually your final i believe it was your final interview before you left wwe we were promoting the final match against roman reigns and you kind of talked about how you were losing some joy in wrestling is it safe to say that that joy has come back yeah well and it was really weird because it wasn't losing joy in wrestling it was the one unique experience at wrestlemania where it was just like whoa this feels empty and it's crazy because it was like the first time in front of fans in over a year you know what I mean and it was just like uh but it was, ironically my last match in WWE with Roman I was pumped for I loved it it's in the Thunderdome it's just a bunch of screens and canned crowd noise and stuff and I was just like this is great I love this you know and like and I honestly thought like oh that's a perfect that's a perfect way to go out uh because I was also wasn't sure if I was even going to sign with AEW or uh, I was debating back and forth, but I was also debating on just kind of, I don't want to say hanging it up, but just stop doing it full time and focus more on being a dad. So. I remember that was something you actually spoke about in the interview, like that process of going back and forth. Obviously you eventually decide on AEW. Was there anything when you came into the company that was like completely different than you had imagined? The, the, the lack of people telling you what to do. <laughs> that sounds nice. Yeah, it is. You, you know, and it, and it really is, right? Um, except when you're not used to it. Like if you haven't if you haven't done that, and I hadn't done that in like twelve years, right? As far as like there was this uh, there was this one interview segment. I forget what it was. And like, okay, yeah. Uh, what do you want me to say? Whatever you want. What do you mean, whatever you want? <laughs> <laughs> can't say whatever I want because that's probably not appropriate for television you know so you know it's uh th that was like and also and I've said this before I I actually enjoy working with the writers right but it doesn't need it doesn't need to be writers like I, for example if I'm doing something with uh with Mox or with uh with Kenny or something like that this, that stuff I like collaborating I think that's one of the things that I love the most about wrestling is collaborating with people. So, uh, so yeah, so that's it. my first experience really kind of not doing that or just us coming up with it on our own. I was like, Oh, like this is, this is unique. The Blackpool combat club is like my favorite thing in pro wrestling right now. 
Claudio, obviously a fantastic new addition. Is the current iteration and how it's grown kind of how you envisioned it when it started, or is that all an organic thing and adding new members like that? Uh, it's all just kind of been organic. It wasn't like when it wasn't like we even knew we were going to be a group. Like when we first, when I first wrestled Moxley at the pay-per-view, it wasn't like, okay, now we're going to form a group, right? It was like, we just batted things around and things evolved naturally. And then Wheeler uh, adding that evolved naturally. And it, it could have honestly from uh, if it weren't for a couple injuries that happened, it might've been somebody else in Wheeler's spot, but Wheeler was put into that position and stepped up to the plate huge. And he's been a great addition. I mean, th same thing with Claudio. Like if I hadn't have gotten hurt, I don't know if Claudio would have been in the Blackpool combat club per se, you know, um, but yeah, now I really like the dynamic. One of my favorite clips ever is from your match with William Regal in 2011, where they play the real man's man theme and he gets to crack on television. Where does that rank in your proudest moments? Like getting William Regal to even not be able to hide his smile under that scowl. Yeah, pretty high, right? Like, <laughs> uh, but do you know what, do you know what's, uh, so, it, you know, I really, you know, I really enjoy that. And I, you know, I'm thrilled um, he's here too, because obviously yeah. uh, getting to see him every week is just a real, uh, a real treasure for me. So like, because for a long time, we didn't get to see each other hardly at all. Right. And so, uh, so now we get to see each other on a, on a, a nearly weekly basis and, uh, and work with people and joke and laugh and everything. So yeah, it's been a blast. Did the idea to go, early to TV and help the young talent come from you or him or both of you? Was it like just something you decided to do one day? Well, no. So uh, Tony asked me, Tony Khan asked me to work with Jade Cargill. And so, uh, and so I was like, okay, Jade, when, do, when works best for you? And the women a lot of times have a training session at 12 with Dustin Rhodes, like uh, a lot of the women go in and do like a class setting with Dustin. So it'd be better. So she was saying like, oh, maybe one. And then somebody, uh, and then somebody else asked me, um, so Anthony Agogo, who is, is doing great, right? Um, he asked me if we could start working together. And I was like, yeah, but we'll have to go in at 11 because the girls start at 12. And then I trained with Jade at one. And so, so then, and then it just started, you know, once you start, yep. <laughs> it gets earlier. <laughs> and then, but you know what? You know, to me, it's fun. So it's like, uh, I would rather do that than sit in my hotel room, right? So yeah, uh, yeah. and I, I also too, I feel like uh, I'm giving back, which is part of my this portion of my career is to me feels like mostly one having fun and two giving back. So that's awesome. Um, one match I would love to ask about is the Anarchy in the Arena match, because that was one of the most chaotic matches I've ever seen, I feel like. It might be my favorite match of the year. I listened to some interviews with you right beforehand, where you spoke about loving the improv of pro wrestling, and loving that you could show up to the arena that day, see a staircase, and be like, oh, maybe I could do something on that. Maybe we could, you know, figure something out there. What was the actual experience of being in the match like? Uh, it was wonderful, right? It was, uh, I and I loved the music playing for yes. so long, right? Like it, uh, it just felt chaotic. Like uh, part of what I really love about wrestling is it really makes you feel alive. Like if you're in that moment, um, it just like you just get this energy coursing through your body. And that specific night, it was crazy. It was like it was awesome because it's just like it, you're in amongst the people, and um, and it's like like being that close that kind of intimate with them but in such a large arena like i i loved it uh i i was just as disappointed as the fans when the music stopped playing when jericho <laughs> pressed the thing i was like oh like i was i was getting <laughs> i was really into that you know what i mean but yeah it was fun you wanted the full match new jack style yeah 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 for sure for sure um claudio is the new ring of honor world champion does him working in Ring of Honor and, you know, Samoa Joe being down there and so many other Ring of Honor legends being down there maybe make you want to work there at all? Does that interest you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, everything wrestling interests me. The only, the, the, the uh, 
the only thing is is like scheduling wise like okay it's 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 wrestling versus spending time with the family right and so yeah. that's like because like too i still want to do new japan i still you know and i want to do ring of honor and you know like all these different things and there's tons of people that i love to wrestle and all that kind of stuff but uh you know part of choosing how you live your life is being able to say no to things and even saying no to things that you want to do like i want to do that but i'm sorry i have to say no and so that's like when you're looking at your priorities it's crazy to me because you know we have this finite life right and you have to make choices about what you're going to do with the finite time that you have here and there's lots of things that you could do that would be a lot of fun that you'd like to do but there's a, a certain sense of freedom in saying no i'm not going to do that because i'm focusing on this these are more important so for me like i love being able to wrestle every week uh traveling out but doing too much more than that clashes with my other priorities which is my family so that's some good life advice right there i hope people were taking notes right there i like, <laughs> I like that <laughs> maybe i'll be a life coach maybe yeah you could be you, uh, yeah that's what i picture you closing your 11 a.m uh, lesson with you know yeah um i had recently heard that the orchestral version of your theme that was just released was actually like made for you at the beginning of your aew journey did you listen to that and born for greatness and choose one over the other no uh so i didn't know about music so i reached out to a friend of mine um to uh to to make and i just all i had was an idea i was like hey i don't know if we could just kind of something with um right of the valkyries or something with the you're gonna get your effing head kicked in chant or something final countdown ish and uh my friend elliot he was, he was like dude i'll get on it right away and what he sent me i was just like whoa that's great and then the first iteration of what so i sent that to tony tony listened to the first iteration of what they had done and um liked born for greatness better but i i think born for greatness and the finalized version of uh of of what they came up with was really really good both of them are good so yeah no i think it's a great theme as well i was just curious about that and speaking of entrances do you have a favorite walk to the ring ever you're not necessarily someone known for the big over the top like theatrical entrances but do you have like one where as you were walking to the ring you're like this feels great uh so it wasn't walking to the ring it was a match with um morishima for ring of honor and I think it was uh, the fight without honor, the last match that we did. Final countdown was playing, and they do the lights down music and all these things. But then I come up from out of the ring from behind him, springboard drop kick right into the crowd. And it just happened to be perfect timing. I dove into the crowd on Morishima, whammo. And then I stand up right on the guardrail, right as the final count. It's the final. Everyone it was, doing it at the yeah, same it was, time. Yeah, yeah. It just, it, yeah, it was just. It was just badass, and I didn't time it that way. It was just, it was luck. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, it's not that I had this impeccable timing. I was just doing my stuff, and then I stood up on the guardrail at the final countdown. But I was like, oh, that worked out perfect. So it was just meant to be. Yeah, no, that be, is an yeah. awesome one. There's some unbelievable clips of you diving into the crowd back then, where you just land on those hard looking chairs in the most awkward positions. Yeah, but when I'm wrestling, I'm invincible. So. It's only after the match. <laughs> <laughs> it, it appears that way, honestly, because always, you know, you stand up, you know, put on a mean face and it's like, all right, I guess that didn't hurt him, even though it looked like the most painful thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. 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 I, I honestly like uh, and I joke about it with people and my my wife gets really upset when I say it, when I say that I'm invincible. But like it's uh, because clearly it's not true. I've been hurt multiple <laughs> times. <right? laughs> but uh but like when I'm out there, I don't, I don't feel much, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. so, uh, so yeah, that's, you know, in my head, I also, in my mind, I wrestle with the idea that I'm invincible because I don't want to wrestle like worried about, Oh, what if, what if I hurt my neck or what if, you know, this or whatever it is, right? Like those are things that I prepare for while I'm training, right? Like I do, I still do all my neck exercises that they had me doing post neck surgery in 2014 so that's been eight years of me doing 
daily neck exercises and my wife just like rolls her eyes <laughs> just like <laughs> because we're like before bed she's wanting to watch a show together and I'm on the ground like doing these chin tucks and like all this <laughs> stuff and I'm like but that's the uh I like to think of that as the fee that's the fee that I pay for doing this thing that I love yeah no I, I respect that I, you're keeping yourself in shape you're keeping your, your neck strong and everything um, I saw a dark match from 2001 Raw resurface on Reddit the other day. It was you versus Jerry Lynn. Pretty surreal given the setting, the time. What was that like for you so early in your career? Oh, I was super nervous. I mean, Jerry Lynn. Um, so also Jerry Lynn, the ECW, um, when he was in ECW, like that had a lot of impact on people of my generation who were watching that stuff and they were doing some really cool lightning fast stuff and wrestling didn't have as many cool spots as it does today you know what I mean and so like yeah Jerry was doing all the all this amazing stuff and so uh so I was really I was really nervous but Jerry then now forever <laughs> is a, is a, is a, is a, he's a real he's a real pro and like also just the kindest man you know what i mean so yeah. he he wasn't like uh some people in that situation would be like i'm just gonna this is just a squash match i'm just gonna eat you up kid and no jerry wanted to go out and, and wrestle and it was you know it was uh it was a great experience um another clip that resurfaced on reddit recently was your old imperial march walk to the ring with like the black velvet cape mm, yeah that yeah. was Cust one of the most ridiculous things i've ever seen i just had to ask Custom, about it. was that your idea cloaks.com is where i got that cloak. <laughs> <laughs> i still remember because i was like you know it's yeah, i don't know you know what year it's like 2005 and you know the internet's not nearly as fast as it is now and i was just like where do i get a cloak let me let me look on the internet to see if I and, and there popped up customcloaks.com. Oh, here's one made of crushed velvet. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, it was a weird looking cloak for sure. It was a weird looking cloak. Yeah, it was that, that was that was a uh I did a lot of experimenting in my younger days. <laughs> was just that entrance all your fun. idea though? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um and like uh it was when I was playing around with like, um, so I was going to Japan a lot. I was going to uh, Europe a lot and England and stuff. And I was playing around like everybody was doing um, like uh, the, I was wanting more like orchestral music and, uh, and I was playing around with that. And I never liked Star Wars. Star, Star Wars. I wasn't a Star Wars guy ever. Right. That's, like that's I didn't even see behind me. Yeah. 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 I didn't see <laughs> I didn't even see any of the Star Wars until like the new ones came out with um, who was the Jar Jar Binks and stuff, right? Yeah, like, yeah. And like, so like when that stuff came out, uh, I got goaded in, into my friends, but going to watch the first one, I was like, what is this? I don't, I don't even know. We weren't Star Wars people. But anyways, I liked the Imperial March style. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> Getting Brian Danielson to talk about Star Wars on this podcast, that's a win. You just said yeah. Jar Jar Banks. That was nobody expected that on this. Well, I here. also worked at KB Toys at the time. And oh, so everybody that makes would, sense. you know, whenever, whenever, um, or not at that time, uh, when I was in high school or, or when I went to first see that first Star Wars. Yeah. So, uh, so, and everybody would, I don't want to say everybody, these collectors would come in. So they would wait outside KB Toys at like, 7 a.m we didn't open up until 10 you have to think this is a small kb toys in a mall in aberdeen washington that is eventually it's pretty much closed down now and so it's like but people would show up at 7 a.m and wait till 10 just so they could get like oh this first edition jar jar binks or whoever <laughs> watch your tone brian yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look behind me come on I'll, i'm right. that guy at 7 a.m you know right yeah but i don't I, yeah yeah like i said you know i uh maybe not I read seven this, but i get it you know i uh i read this wonderful book called uh four thousand weeks and it's talking about how essentially on average we only we only have about four thousand weeks to live it's like man i don't know if i want to waste that time getting up at 7 a.m to go and get a plastic doll that's not my deal <laughs> But action I mean, figure <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry. 
Right. But to each their own. Every, everything, yeah. you know, everybody gets joy from different things, you know? I got so, I have a Daniel Bryan one up there. How about that? I'm pointing to it right there. Yeah. Yeah. That, that makes me feel nothing. Now we got to get a Brian Danielson one, though. Uh, um, AW, Brian, you know? Oh. Because that's, a, that's, a, doing... that's an old one. That's a Dan, you know, Daniel Bryan. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I see I see people with those at the airport a lot. That they, they Oh, that you get the yeah. airport people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm not one of those but, people. Those, those aren't yeah. fans. Well, yeah. yeah, no, but I see I see the the bobbleheads. Uh, yeah. They have the bobbleheads a lot. They're huge. Big big collectors on the bobbleheads. I keep up with the trends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do. I saw you post about it on Tout recently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you have any response to the recent allegations made against you by Paul White that you are a backstage bully to Giants? Uh, so I think he he initially tries to bully me, and I just stand up for myself. Interesting. Now, I do bully other people. But not Giants? <laughs> Sometimes Giants. Only yeah, occasionally his, Giants. His but but, but I, pretty... I will have to say this. I come, I come in hot. When I come into the locker room, I come in hot. I don't, I don't, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not coming in there to be soft on these guys. Right. I come in and everybody's on their phone. I'm going to yell at them all. Right. Like, Hey, Hey guys, come on. That's what he says. I mean, this quote says when you walk by Brian Danielson, he just grits his teeth and his eyes get all crazy. And you can tell he's trying to dismantle you. That creepy little monster is trying to run up behind me and choke me out. It makes my okay, life so in AEW a little not, bit nerve-wracking. That's, that's not entirely true. Sometimes, like, I'll be on the training table or something like that, and Paul will come up and, like, grab me in some sort of way, and I'll immediately, as fast as I can, try to arm bar him. So that, <laughs> does, that does happen. I do, not that he's a giant, but I do, I am constantly trying to take down Jake Hager because... He's got a background. He's got a background. Like, yeah. it's not like I'm, I don't know. I don't know who, who, it's not like I'm trying to single leg Brandon Cutler all the time. Not that he, I don't know anything about his single leg defense, but it's not like I see him, he's walking by in the hall and I'm just going to double leg this guy, right? <laughs> that's, that's, that's not my deal, right? I'm, I'm, I'm going for the, I'm going for the big guy. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been successful with Jake? I, 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 I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> okay. I will not say anything. Yeah. All right. Respect it. You don't, you don't kiss and tell. Um, yeah. Who do you think the funniest person backstage at AEW is? Oh gosh. It's so hard because e people have different senses of humor. Like I, he's never like cracking jokes, but I find Mox to be hilarious. Right. He just, he always has like that great, like, he doesn't talk a whole lot. I wish I was more like that. You know, those guys who like, yeah. you know, they, they talk without talking. Like he can just look at you and just like, but he, he always has these little things that just, they, they pop me a lot. So yeah. So him, do you know, who's also really funny that I really enjoy is Austin Gunn. Like, oh I think yeah. He, yeah. 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 He, he's, a, he's a lot of fun. You know, I like, even though I'm going to kick his head in tonight, I think Daniel Garcia is funny. I, uh, oh, oh God. Uh, Angelo Parker and, and, uh, and Matt Menard are both, are both, I mean, there, we have so many, I just have to say this people in wrestling are funny, not everybody, <laughs> yeah. but like you, you decide to dedicate your life to pretending to fight people. And you're just a little weird. Right. Yeah. And most of us, and most of us aren't just like doing it because it's a good paying job. Most of it are doing it, are doing it because we love it, especially like in AEW. Right. So it's like, you have all these people who love pretending to fight and we're just weirdos and it's fun. Do you know who, uh, who I really miss? Who I actually got to see, he came to my house after he did the Steve Austin podcast with Sammy Zayn. And like, oh, he's somebody, really? yeah, I love, I love, I love being around. I love me a good, a good, Sammy Zayn hang out. So uh so yeah, so uh <laughs> so, so I miss I miss being able to see him. But yeah, there's lots of lots of really fun, fun guys to be around. I love that. I feel like people are gonna be thrilled to hear you guys reunited. Yeah.
Um, all right, finally, on our previous chat, we spoke a lot about your proudest moments of your career. I want to know what is the proudest moment you've had in AEW so far? Uh, the hour draw with uh, Hangman Page. Um, I mean, I, so I think, and especially, so he, I, I don't think he'd done a singles match over 30 minutes. And um, I hadn't done an hour long match in many, many years and many moons. It's been many moons since I'd done an hour draw or since an hour, an hour long match. And um, I was also wasn't convinced with the way that wrestling had evolved that people would enjoy it. And um, because it's a, you know, it's not, it's not ding, 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 ding. It's a little, you know, you have to be patient with it. And um, patient isn't necessarily something everybody everybody has in bundles these days <laughs> but uh but i was i was really pleased i was really pleased with it it was also like the first time hangman and i had ever wrestled so it was like you know like uh that's a bit of a daunting task like hey you guys have never wrestled before he's never gone over 30 minutes in a singles match why don't you guys go do it why don't you guys go do an hour um and it was kind of my idea <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, it was daunting, I, but you pitched it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It was, yeah, it, yeah, was yeah. it was, yeah, it was, it was my idea, but, uh, but yeah, but that was that was something I was very, very proud of. Um, I was, I'm, I've also been really proud of the. It's not just my stuff with him; it's also Mox's stuff with him. But I'm proud of everything that's happened with Wheeler Yuta, right? Like, yeah. and and his his performances in those things right because we didn't know we when we started we didn't know that that's where we were going right but like I, I think we were doing a tag match or something like that and I did something and he fired up and like in that moment you're like oh there's something here and then we do the singles and oh there's more here then he does then he does the match it was on rampage with mox yep. and it was it was beautiful it was i think my maybe my favorite match i've seen this year um just because you there was a guy that literally like a month before not many people really knew about him or were talking about him and he had a whole arena and uh, you know just going nuts and you have to think that like rampage is taped after dynamite right so it's like it's, it's been a long day for that crowd right and so uh i i i I've been really, really, really proud of proud of all that. But that's not like proud of what I've done. It's been a collective effort, including like Tony, because a lot of times it's not easy to see somebody who doesn't necessarily have a name or you hadn't planned on pushing to that degree. Tony just went with it and like and saw it and he saw it too. And it was like, dude, this is working. This is working. So I like I was just really proud of Wheeler's performance i'm proud of being a part of it i'm proud that you know i'm proud to be in a company where you see that and then like okay let's yeah let, let's let's let us let them run with it so so that and the hour draw are the two things i'm proud of stuff those are some great answers um brian i really appreciate the time especially on show day thank you so much for doing the show and best of luck in your in-ring return tonight yep thank you very much